pleasant morning to all those viewing this virtual program put on by the St. Margaret of Antioch Anglican Church in Belmont and the St. Jerome Congregation in Gonzales. I am Canon Ronald Branch, priest in charge of the parish, welcoming you to Sunday morning meditations. Let us pray. Pray for family life. Heavenly Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, born of a woman, sanctified childhood and shared the life of an earthly home, bless the homes and families of our nation, Give to parents a true sense of responsibility in the care and training of their children, that our boys and girls may grow up in the fear of your name and the fellowship of your church. For the glory of Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray for our young people. God, our Father, we pray for our young people growing up in an unstable and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more meaning to life than the ways of the world and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure not as a measure of their worth but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith to you and to keep alive their joy in your creation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Second Sunday in Lent, the Collect. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them together with penitent hearts and steadfast feet to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. First reading is taken from Genesis 15, 1 to 12, 17 to 18. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid. Abram, I am your shield, your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O, o Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the year of my house is Eliza of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars. If you are able to count them, then, then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of, from Ur of the Chaldeans and gave you this land to, to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer, three years old, a female goat, three years old, a ram, three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He bought him all these and cut them in two, laying each half over against the other, but he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham, and a, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between those pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, To your descendants I give you this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river of Greece. Psalm 27 The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers come upon me to eat of my flesh, it was they, my foes and my advisories, 
who stumbled and fell. Though an army shall encamp against me, yet my heart shall not be afraid. And though war shall rise up against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall keep me safe in his shelter. He shall hide me in the secrecy of his dwelling and set me high upon a rock. Even now he lifts up my head above my enemies are about me. Therefore I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with songs of great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. You speak in my heart and say, seek my face. Your face, Lord, I will, will I seek. Hide not your face from me, nor turn away your servant in displeasure. You have been my helper. Cast me not away. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will sustain me. Show me your way, O Lord. Lead me on the level path because of my enemies. Deliver me not into the hand of, the, of my advice. adversaries, for false witnesses shall reason up against me, and, those, and also those who speak malice. What have I not been believed? that I should see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. O oh, tarry and await the Lord's pleasure. Be strong and he shall comfort you in your heart. Wait patiently for the Lord. Amen. Second reading is taken from Philippians 3, 17 to 4, 1. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of the Christ. I have often told you of them, and how I tell you, even when, even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it's from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of, of our humiliation that it may be confirmed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord, in his ways, my beloved. The word of the Lord. The room grew still. As she made her way to Jesus, she stumbled through the tears that made her blind. She felt such pain, some spoke in anger, heard folks whisper, there's no place here for you. Still on she came through the shame that flushed her face until at last she knelt before his feet. And though she spoke no words, everything she said was heard as she poured her love for the master from her box. on him like oil from Mary's hallowed pastor box. Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and dry them with my hair. You weren't there the night when Jesus found me you did not feel what I felt when he wrapped his loving arms around me and you don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box I can 
can't forget the way life used to be. I was a prisoner to the sin that had me bound. And I've lived my days, poured my life without measure into a little treasure box I thought I found until the day when Jesus came to me and healed my soul with the wonders of his touch so now I'm giving back to him all the praise he's worthy The Lord be with you and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark chapter 8 reading verses 31 through 38. Glory to Christ our Savior. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Christ our Lord. Last week we were in the wilderness with Jesus during the time of his temptations. And here today, opening 
the Gospel, chapter 8 of St. Mark, Jesus, who had previously commended Peter at Caesarea Philippi, when Peter identified him as the son of the living God, now has to rebuke Peter. For when Jesus said that he was going to suffer and in three days rise again, Peter objected, took him aside and rebuked him. And Jesus said to him, get behind me, Satan. In fact, you see, Peter was doing just as the devil had done last week in trying to tempt Jesus. And so he rebuked him. Something that we have to understand, as I said, as long as we have breath in our nostrils, temptations will come. Peter was still not thinking of any sacrificial love on a cross for the future of Jesus. In fact, he was thinking that this Messiah would have power and no one will be able to touch him. But he was so wrong on that score that Jesus did not hesitate to correct him immediately. And he rebuked him. And he went further, saying that anyone wants to follow him will have to pick up their cross daily and follow him. Those who want to save their life will lose it those who lose their life for my sake and the sake of the gospel will find it. That's the story. And then Jesus strikes a note, a quest, note in a question form. For well, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his soul. What will you profit if you got all the material things that you want, that you clamor after, but you lost your soul? And you know it's very important sometimes for us to look at the different Gospels. Because Luke, in putting this together, he says what advantages a man has if he gains the whole world and lose himself. Luke does not say his soul. He says himself. What Luke is doing there is identifying for us that our soul is ourselves. That's what he's saying to us. And that indeed is a fact. You know, in a church in Milan, on one door to the left, it says that all that pleases is for a moment. On the door to your right, to your right, it says that all that troubles is for a moment. And on the middle door, there's a cross with these words, but there's nothing more important than eternal life, which is forever. Significant 
for what we are talking about. The story is told that after Adam and Eve had come out of the garden, they went and lay down on the tree. And when they got up, they were there wondering, where would we or could we hide the soul of man? And this discussion is taking place among the elements. The earth says, well, maybe you can bury the soul of man in me, in the earth. Man will never find it. If we go deep, deep down, there's no way man could find it. And then water jumps up and says, mm -mm. somebody is going to come up with some invention and be able to go deep down in the earth and find the soul. Put the soul in me, in the water. You can go far out and deep down in fathoms of water, they will not find a soul. Hmm. And then um, the other element, fire, says, um, don't worry about that man. I'm going to tell you all just now where to bury the soul. But let me hear what air has to say. So air say, well, I can carry the soul up into the heavens and they will never be able to find man's soul. I say, well, uh, the way they put in men on the moon, it's possible that they could go up there and they could find the soul. So fire says, I have the solution. I'm going to light up the place. And that fire is going to swallow man's soul. But the fire brought out man's soul looking clean and gleaming. So the others said, mm -mm. you're making the soul look better than ever. So they decided to go back to the devil and ask the devil, well, where can we hide man's soul? And the devil looked at them and laughed. He said, um, what's wrong with you all? You really want to hide man's soul? Put it in himself and he will never find it. And so, that is how man's soul is within himself. To find it is man's job. Some people go through life searching and never realize what God has put within them, the soul. And God is a good God. Because when we look at some Bible characters, when we look at David, where he struggles with his sin, because that is what disturbs our souls. 
And when he comes to himself and he confesses his sin, create in me a clean heart, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. That's David. Because he tells us While he was struggling with the sin, he had no taste in his mouth. The moisture in his, on his tongue had dried up. And his bones were racking with pain. That's David. A man after God's heart. But God is a loving and forgiving God. And so he forgave David his sin. Not that David didn't suffer consequences for his sin. Because you will suffer consequences for the sin that you commit. But God is a forgiving God. God is a just God. And so David was given a chance, another opportunity to redeem his soul. It is important for us to remember that on the cross, in his last hour, one of the thieves appealed to Jesus Recognizing Jesus, even though his partner on the other side was joining the crowd and saying, crucify him. This penitent thief asked Jesus a favor. He wanted to be in paradise with Jesus. There and then, Jesus responded to him. Not tomorrow, not next week or next month, not next year, but today you will be with me in paradise. That's Jesus. Forgiving, restoring, redeeming the soul. And so it is important for us to understand that while we clamor after the material things of this life, the question is asked, what if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? Jesus responds to that for us, for he expects us to understand that as baptized Christians, in our vocation to keep the covenant baptism in Christ, we must not allow these things to distract us, or I should say to attract us so much that we lose our souls. Let us learn from these experiences of those who went through the mill. For we must understand that this life is about trials and tribulations. We are being probed over and over to see if we really have within us that soul, that soul that God has put within us. May we continue to look at it by examining ourselves repeatedly to determine whether we are, in fact, doing what is right and pleasing in God's sight. 
and preparing for that time when we will appear before the throne to be judged by God on what we have done with our soul. Amen. Lent, anyway. Lent is the season in the church when everybody gets ready for Easter. It's kind of like how Advent is the season when we all get ready for Christmas. So in this special season of Lent, we change all the church decorations to purple because in the Bible, purple is the color of royalty and Jesus is our King. And we like to do three things. We pray so we can spend time with God. And we fast, which means we give something up that we like, maybe like candy, so we're not so distracted from being with God. And we give, sometimes it's called almsgiving, so we can help the people that need help because we want to be kind and generous, like God is kind and generous. Lent goes on for 40 days because Jesus spent 40 days praying and fasting in the desert before he started to teach us about the kingdom of God. So after 40 days, we'll celebrate Easter because that's the day that Jesus, through his resurrection, welcomed us into God's family. Jesus began telling his disciples what would happen to him. He said, The nation's leaders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law of Moses will make the Son of Man suffer terribly. He'll be rejected and killed. But three days later, he'll rise to life. Then Jesus explained clearly what he meant. Peter took Jesus aside and told him to stop talking like that. But when Jesus turned and saw the disciples, he corrected Peter. He said to him, Satan, get away from me. You are thinking like everyone else and not like God. Jesus then told the crowd and the disciples to come closer. And he said, If any of you want to be my followers, you must forget about yourself. You must take up your cross and follow me. If you want to save your life, you will destroy it. But if you give up your life for me and for the good news, you will save it. What will you gain if you own the whole world but destroy yourself? Happy Sunday. Jesus had a relationship with his disciples. They were friends. The Bible says, and he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And after three days, rise again. So Jesus is telling the disciples what God's plan is. He's telling them that he will die, but that he won't stay dead. He is going to raise from the grave three days later. So in verse 32, it says, Peter took Jesus aside and he began to rebuke him. Say the word rebuke. Great job. Okay, that means that he was getting onto Jesus. Jesus, Peter was getting onto Jesus like he was in trouble. He knew that Jesus was the Messiah, the Savior, but he didn't understand what all that meant. And he didn't want Jesus to die. He loved Jesus. He didn't think he had to die. But Jesus, turning and seeing his disciples, and, and he brought the crowd in, Jesus rebuked Peter. So now Jesus is getting on to Peter. You see, Jesus had heard this before in the Old Testament, which is toward the beginning of your Bible. It's actually in the book of Isaiah. Satan, who was a fallen angel that disobeyed God, he tempted Jesus with all of the things of the world. He tried to convince Jesus that he didn't have to die, that he could be king and that he could have all of the nice things. All he had to do was bow down to Satan. 
But Jesus knew God's plan and he knew that he had to die. So when Peter comes to him saying this, saying that he doesn't have to die, Jesus is reminded of what Satan had said before. And so Jesus' response is my favorite. He says, get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. I seriously love this phrase so much. And I'll be honest, there are some times when I am distracted by worldly things. I remember this one time when I was a little girl, I was so scared. It was pouring down raining outside and thundering so loud that it felt like the whole house was shaking. I was so scared that I was literally crying. Are any of y'all scared of storms? Right, let me see those hands. I know some of you are. Well, my mom came in and she sat next to me and she asked what in the world I was so afraid of. She said, it's just a little bit of rain and thunder. There's nothing to fear. She told me that I needed to focus on Jesus. Even if I sat there and pretended like I was looking in his face, imagining what Jesus's face looked like. The Bible even says that you can look up to him so that you're taking your eyes off of the things of this world that are in front of you. Because if your eyes and your heart are focused on Jesus, then you won't have any fear. I was letting the fear of worldly things get in my way of me seeing Jesus. So she actually told me to say out loud, get behind me, Satan, because if your fear is back here behind you, then you can focus on the things of God like the Bible tells you to do. If you are ever in a situation like that, or sometimes when the world is keeping you from Jesus, or you're not feeling like you are safe in his arms, I want to encourage you to actually say out loud, get behind me, Satan. Say it with me now, get behind me, Satan. So great, I love it. Don't forget that. Okay, then Jesus said to them, and I'm gonna reword this part for you so that you understand. He said, if you want to come with me, then put your selfish wants aside and put God first and yourself second. Now you may have to go through some hard situations so that you can share the love of God with others, but you will get to have a relationship with me, Jesus. Now, if you decide to put yourself first, then you will die. But if you put all of your wants to the side and you put Jesus first, then he will save you. Let me ask you kids, what if you had all of the treasures of this world, but then you died? What if you had all of the diamonds and the jewels and the toys and the money, but then you didn't get to live anymore, so you weren't able to even use them or play with them? You couldn't use the money or the things to buy back your life. It doesn't work that way. You see, if you put your trust and your faith in Jesus, he will save you. And he is way better than all of the things, all of the treasures of this world. You will not lose your life, but you will get to live in heaven with him forever. When the spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will dance like David danced. When the spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will dance like David Baby, dance.
Let's go. Let me ask you, are you ready to throw down? Intercession from D, page 111 in the Book of Common Prayer. Our Heavenly Father has promised through our Lord Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. Let us therefore pray for the church and the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. We pray for the church of God in every place, especially for this diocese, or bishop, or priest, and all the people of God. Strengthen your church to carry forward the work of Christ, that we and all who confess your name may unite in truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world. We pray for our country and for all the nations of the world, and for all the peoples in their various callings. Direct this nation and all nations in the ways of justice and truth. Give wisdom to all in positions of public trust and authority that they may promote the prosperity, godliness, and peace of your people everywhere. We pray for our own community, this parish, for our families, our friends, and all who live and work with us. Give grace to all our friends and neighbors in Christ, that we may share him in one another and grow together in his love. We pray for the poor, the sick, the unemployed, the handicapped, all who have requested our prayers and all who seek the prayers of Christ from the church in their time of trouble. Give healing and strength to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and sustain all who remember and care for them. We commemorate the departed, especially those of this church and community. We commend all people to your unfailing love, that in them you, will be you may be fulfilled and we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Accept these prayers, O Lord, for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and our reflection on the soul of man. Pray God that those who have listened to this will be edified by it and not be hearers only, but doers who act. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This week we had the opportunity for Miss Judy Parks, who read the colic and the lessons and the psalm, and Miss Alicia Barry will do the intercessions. I am Canon Ronald Branch, thanking you for listening to Sunday morning meditations brought to you through the St. Margaret of Antioch Anglican Church and the St. Jerome Church in Gonzales. Thanks, and I pray that you will have a spirit-filled week. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>